One of the things that we love here, Sasha. Yes. Any guesses? One of the things we love here is unboxings. Yeah, Yeah, we love unboxings. She's going to say Linux. Yes, we love Linux. She's going to say... Open source software. Yes. Open source software. Why do I love open source software so much? Ah, uh, why? Have, because because it's your heart. I don't know why. Because they, it's open and it, nobody makes money off it. <laughs> 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 yes, Robbie, who gives away the show for free, loves things that make no money. No, um, there is that. But I think there's this whole kind of spirit of community around open source software that says, and sometimes this is not the case, but certainly a lot of the times it is. It's people working together to develop software that they love and they are passionate about and they distribute and they give away absolutely free so that community members, people who want to just go to their websites and download it, can do that. You and took, it's free. You took the words right out of my mouth. It's like it's like the tech flash mob. Like the way everybody just in community gets together and they do something for the greater good. Only this is just open source. Not just open source. <laughs> it is open source. It's just like it. It's just like it. So you think about things like Microsoft Windows. And then you realize that there is Linux. Look at Linux Mint. Look at Ubuntu. Look at Ubuntu Mate and realize that Windows being a commercial application, that's closed source, it's proprietary and it is it belongs to Microsoft and you're paying for that. Linux on the other hand is open source, it's free, you can download it, you can install it, you're not limited to how many computers you put it on, you can put it on everything and it still remains free. You can do all the same things that you normally would, like going on the internet, doing the, you know, checking your email, surfing the web, watching YouTube, watching Category 5. All these things can be done. And then you say, well, yeah, but I need Photoshop. Because we're back in that mindset of proprietary, commercial, it's owned by Adobe, it's not something that we can just have and install on everything. But then we realize, oh, just like Linux is to Windows, there are alternatives to things like Photoshop. Sasha's got a guess. Um, GIMP? GIMP. And when you say (laughs) GIMP, it stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. GIMP for short. GIMP.org is where you can go. Head on over there. GIMP.org. I'm going to see if I can bring up my screen here. I'm sure I could. Here we are. And there we are. And the first screen that you see is giant, huge button that says download 2.10.4. That's what it says today. Tomorrow it might be (laughs) (laughs) 2.10.5. So you click on that, and lo and behold, hey, download it directly, and it's available for Linux. So if you've already made that choice that, hey, I want to go the open source route, not use Microsoft Windows, not use Mac OS, I want Linux, and you've made that choice, hey, you can install the GNU image manipulation program on your Linux system. And now you've got an open source alternative to Adobe Photoshop on that computer as well. You're saving some money, my friend. You are frugal. But then look right next to that. It's also available for OS X. It's also available for Microsoft Windows. If you are stuck on Microsoft Windows, or maybe you love it, you can still download the GNU Image Manipulation Program, and you can give it a go. Hey, it doesn't hurt anything to try it, right? So why not head on over to GIMP.org and download that application and install it to your computer. So if you're on Windows, just click on the Microsoft Windows link and it'll take you there. This tells us a whole big bunch of, you see, I mean, this tells us a lot about the GNU image manipulation program. It's been around for years and years. And right now, with 2.10.4, why am I so excited about it tonight? Anything that I could ever complain about with the GNU Image Manipulation Program or anything that would make somebody say, yeah, I like that it's open source, I like that it's free, but it's not as good as Photoshop. A lot of those things, anything that you can think of, other than CMYK, we'll talk about that, but any of those things are resolved. 
So now we have, we're at the place with this free program where the GIMP is so good. You can use this in commercial, for commercial use. You can use this. I have used this to do billboard scale print jobs. And I do it all in RGB because the GNU image manipulation program, if you want to look for anything that is better in Photoshop, that would be my example, would be that Photoshop will work in both CMYK and RGB. If you don't know what that means, it probably does not matter to you. Graphic designers will prefer to work in CMYK. It's more photo accurate in print. So when you print something, it's going to probably come out more accurately. But with some care, RGB, which is red, green, blue, can still produce an exceptional result. And if you're producing images for web, for online, for screen display, and for most print jobs too, RGB is going to work just absolutely fine. So it's not a downfall in the GIMP. It's just truly that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest um, thing that is different about the GIMP. So with 10.2, uh, pardon me, 2.10.4 having been released. There are a bunch of really great new features. Now, I mentioned that some things have been fixed that used to be idiosyncrasies about the program. Now, those would be things like when you used to rotate an image a little bit, it would go blurry because it didn't have very good interpolation for reinterpolating the pixels. Photoshop had a one-up on that. Things like scaling down images, Photoshop did a better job because the GIMP would come out with a blurry image if you scaled down. Now that's no longer a problem. I've showed it on Category 5 before, but uh, I will show it again tonight really briefly. Uh, but um, so that is no longer a problem. So now looking at 2.10.4, we have some enhancements to things like the measure tool, which is what I want to look at tonight in our demonstration. But it allows us to fix the horizon of our image. Uh, our images, and I want to show you that, so I'm not going to get too much into it. It has asynchronous font loading. What does that mean? When you open your program, it loads all the fonts. Well, now GIMP says, you know what? You probably don't need Comic Sans MS, so let's not load it until you de demand it. Let's let's just wait. And and so it, it and because it's asynchronous, it's doing other things while it's loading those fonts, and so it's going to load up a lot quicker. We've got font tagging. We've got dashboard updates, which means that they have made some improvements to the UI. Um, the PSD loading. So this is important. They've made some enhancements to the way it loads PSD files. That may not mean anything to you, but if you are transferring files between someone who uses Photoshop and the GIMP, a PSD file is a file that was saved in Photoshop. Photoshop document, I believe it stands for. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a PSD file was saved in the actual Adobe Photoshop uh, program in their format. So in the GNU image manipulation program, if you make that transition, now you can open all those PSD files and it does a very, very good job of loading PSD files directly. They have been working toward Gaggle and Babel support and that is just nonsense, right? But it means that, again, the interpolation is much, much better, speed is much, much better, and a lot of the plugins have been redone to work better and more professionally. Gaggle is a big part of that. And again, you don't need to know all the details, but you can read about it on their website at GIMP.org. Are you ready to get into it, Sash? Certainly am. Can I show you how this works? Please. Have you? Sasha, I'm talking to you, kid. Yeah. Have you ever taken a photo only to realize that you, you, it looks like it was taken by a one-legged pirate. Uh, <laughs> you know me well. Holding the camera, <laughs> take the picture. You think it's straight, but you know, you're, you're a little bit skewed, right. so it ends up being horribly skewed. I've got a picture here that we're going to pretend I took. In fact, I did not. I got it from Pexels. Pexels.com, check them out. Okay, open with GNU Image Manipulation Program. Now, I skewed it. The photographer didn't do this to it. Welcome to the GIMP. This is the GNU Image Manipulation Program 2.10.4. Beautiful. Now, I am running this on Microsoft Windows 10. You can run this on any platform, Windows, Mac, Linux. And you notice with this photo, now it is incredibly skewed. If I create a box, uh, I can see that a one-legged pirate did take this picture. 
And this happens very, very often. Now, I get photos from customers that because when you're standing in a room, if you are not looking straight at the wall, you're looking a little bit off, that horizon of the wall will be off. And so in your mind, you think, oh, we'll straighten it and then take the picture. But then it ends up actually being crooked because it's not where the horizon should be. So I'm using this extreme example to really quickly show you one of the great new features, the enhancements that come built into the GIMP 2.10.4. Now, this is a free program, remember, and we've got all these great tools. We've got filters, we've got color, uh, you know, if you want to fix the levels of a photo, you can do that, just like you would in, an, in Adobe Photoshop. And then you can save those settings to, to the photo just like that. Or you can undo, you've got all these options. Filters, as I mentioned, we've got things like Gaussian Blur. You need to install this, go through these things, and just play and have fun. But in this example, now I brightened it up a little bit there with my levels, and in this example, I want to fix the horizon. Now, normally, I would go through a process of having to rotate the image, which I can do. I can turn on things like a, a grid if I want to be able to kind of line that up. Let's see if I can show grid. I don't know. I'm just kind of playing. But sometimes, yeah, there are things like show grid. I don't know where it is. But just to say, there, you know, sometimes we hack around things and have to go like that, and then we crop it, and it's not ideal. Now, watch how easy they've made this. So looking again at this as a possible professional um, suite to use, I'm going to just simply use the measure tool, which is usually used to, of course, measure, right? And we can use this to now fix the horizon of any photo. So when I say horizon, I'm using an actual sunset horizon. You may be using a photo in a room or indoors, outdoors, whatever, but the horizon being, you know, where it should be straight. So jumping back here, I'm going to change my interpolation. Now, I mentioned how things used to get blurry if you made some changes because we only had none linear and cubic. Now we have no halo, and with no halo interpolation, we're able to get a very, very nice, clean um, pixel um, recreation if we modify the, the image, the scaling, and those kinds of things. Then we've got the clipping. Now, this is how we want to um, work with the image, how we want to crop it or whatever um, after we straighten it. So. I'm going to show you those features in just a moment, and it'll all make sense. So I'm going to just simply click on the horizon and drag, and I'm going to just put a line, what looks like a line with the measure tool, and let go. Now there's a line where the horizon is. You can see that? And so now, all I have to do, you ready for this, Sasha? I am. What do you think about this button? Straighten. I'm going to push that and just watch what happens to this picture. Now, it's fast. I'm working with a 4818 by 2590 photo. And now, my horizon is huh. perfectly straight. Look at that if I make a box. That is perfect. It's beautiful. But I've got this, like, strange kind of cropping happening because it's done it within the canvas. And so it's got these kind of, you know, the alpha section showing right. behind. So I'm going to change the way that I do this by going back to my measure tool, mm -hmm. which has moved now that I made that wider. Where to go? There it is. All right. Leaving interpolation and no halo because I want it to stay real clean. Let's look at what clip does differently. So I'm going to do the same thing and straighten. And lo and behold, Clip looks pretty much the same to me as adjust. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to undo, and I'm going to change to crop to result. Now this is starting to sound promising. And do my line, straighten. And you may not think to look for this under measure, huh. but there it is. So now you see what's happened. We've still got that alpha area, but it is... Uh, the image has been cropped so that I can now right click on the image and go image and then crop to content. Watch what happens. Boom. Nice. There is a beautiful image that I can now work with that has a perfect horizon. 
and I didn't have to figure it out. I didn't have to do any calculations. I didn't have to line things up and zoom in and squint. It was just that easy. That is incredible. I could probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's our measurement, folks. <laughs> Sasha, do you think you could do this? I think I could do that. She thinks she could do this, <laughs> so you can do it too. But truthfully, I mean, okay, let's backtrack just real quick. GIMP GNU Image Manipulation Program is free. You can download it from GIMP.org. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it is continually being developed by an open source community of developers, and it is continually improving. Now with 2.10.4 available, you can do something like straighten your image horizon just that easily. Go to GIMP.org, pick up your copy today. It's absolutely free. What are you waiting for? 